Okay, I'm live. Alright, so I'm gonna get off of here and then... <laughs> Join me. Let me see if yeah. I can invite you. Mm -hmm. I, don't think I, can even, I don't know if I'll be able to see it from my um, laptop, actually. I heard something on my phone. I heard a ding, so maybe that's you. Yeah, it could be me. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Yeah, you laughed. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get off of here. Okay. Let me see. Hold on. If I go to your page. Okay. Okay. Bye. Hey, hey. We're just troubleshooting, trying to get this thing started. As you guys come in, if you'll shoot me a hey so I know you're here because this is not showing me um, who all is in the, who all are in here. today so much has changed with Facebook since I did my last hiatus so I'm, I'm having to catch up there you go here we are men of the hour There you are. Hey. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have to figure this out because uh, now that we're live, I was thinking I was gonna be able to put this on my little stand I bought and um, do it that way. But if I go sideways, that's how people are gonna see this. Right. Hold on, let me see something. Oh no, that's not what I want. Okay. This there. All right, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so finally, after 30 minutes, we said, I've been posting about this for about, a, what, two weeks now? Or a week? <laughs> two yeah. weeks? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, because, you know, we just started late. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, I, uh, Kay's, Kay invited, has to be the host uh, on Facebook because I can't figure out mine trying to figure out which camera to look into. I couldn't figure out mine, so um, Kay um, actually had to uh, invite us, but um, I want to uh, invite people out, right, invite people to listen to the uh, to what this is, um, just to kind of give you a, a full vision of what this is all about. Uh, this is called the BU Creative Group Global Community Initiative. Uh, for education, fine arts, and fitness. And so the whole idea behind this is, is to, um, uh, to bring in the community uh, spiritually. Um, um, also, that's through education, through uh, fit, uh, fine arts and um, fitness. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. Um, that's where all this draws from is from my faith in God. But the other part about this is that it's community driven. So there's no judgment here. There's nobody, you know, I'm not beating people uh, with my Bible or, or nothing like that. Uh, I'm a strong believer in, in you know, in God and, and in church. But I feel like there's something missing in the community when it comes to the church. I, I don't believe that. I don't I feel like there's not enough connection. And um, I want to draw that. I want to bridge that gap by not not trying to bring people into the church, but going out into the community. So uh, just a little bit about. Uh, uh, and I'm, I'm going to talk with Kay here in a second, but uh, this uh, since this is community driven, um, the, the issues we talk about are going to be 
balanced and practical. So um, I want I invited Kay Nicole um, out and let me see if I can find the um, it's actually on my phone. Uh, <laughs> she has uh, she's a licensed counselor. Um, just so can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Kay? Uh, yeah. Um, born and raised here, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Um, I, um, I'm not sure what you're looking for. So I guess I'll just tell you my professional yeah, background. Just, first. Yeah, tell us your professional background and everything. That's really what I, I want the uh, audience to know about. Okay, okay. Um, I um, got uh, my my bachelor degree from uh, in psychology from Oklahoma State University. And then um, I took a break and I spent some work in casework, some time in casework um, in Texas. And then I went and got my mental health counseling degree, uh, master's in mental health counseling from Emporia State University, which is in Kansas. So um, mm -hmm. I finished that degree in 2010. I came back. I've had um, a host of different experiences. Um, I've worked at an inpatient facility for adolescents and teens. I've been a um, trauma therapist for uh, children who were in the system. And I've also worked a lot with uh, just various different other um, individual and family oriented uh, struggles in the community. So that's just a kind of like a quick blur. Yeah, awesome. So uh, this this is my first uh, event that I'm I want to put on. I'm actually wanting to I want to have these in actual places, but uh, from quarantine to finding places to have these events, I uh, want to do them online. So this is the first thing. This is the first one I'm doing uh, to give education on mental health. Um, and I now feel like for me, it's time to talk with people about myself. I've dealt with mental illness for 13 years now. I'm about to turn 36, May 31st. And um, this is now a topic that I'm going to talk on it from time to time. Maybe it may be yearly um, on in the month of May that I go very strong in this area to let uh, people know about it and um, to help people to to really um, just uh, um, know what what it what mental illness is, what it is to keep, have a healthy mind and things like that. So I wanted to invite Kay Nicole because she understands this. Uh, she's licensed in helping people in this area, and I want to help people in this area. Um, I've I'm, I've learned by experience. I just uh, just recently, <laughs> after 13 years, realized how much I need the medicine. Just because I've gotten older, and now I realize the difference between uh, uh, being emotional and actually being stable. And so. Um, being an adult is a lot different than being in your early 20s up into your 30s. It's a lot different. Uh, so when someone says calm down or whatever, you're like, what do you mean calm down? You know, we don't necessarily know what that means probably in our early 20s. But then when we get older, it's like, oh, yeah, I do need to calm down because we see we're, we're just thinking different and we're, we're more mature. But when you're on medicine, uh, when you have to be on medicine, it is different because you can be off your medicine and then someone says, calm down. And you're like, what do you mean calm down? But really it's cause you're not on your medicine. So uh, when you start taking the medicine, you realize, man, I was acting up and you, and you don't, you know, you don't realize that's what you were doing until you take your medicine. So uh, for me, I've had to do this for, for 13 years. I haven't taken medicine for 13 years. So I want to be able to help other people um, get a grip on um, understanding mental health. If you deal, if you're dealing with mental illness, or you're dealing with, and you having a, 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 you're dealing with mental health, or you know someone who is, um, I want, I wanted to have this broadcast to be able to help people in those areas. So, um, uh, so thanks, to Kay Nicole, for doing, for being here, and everything. And I, I want us to get started in. Um, some of the areas we talked about what uh, that we were going to discuss um, beforehand. And um, um, one of those areas was uh, the wondering mind. We talked about the wondering mind. And I know for myself, when um, I think about the wondering mind, it's, it's uh, uh, I think about, I'm just kind of give you an idea of myself. Like I go to work and um, when I get off work, I'm tired. And 
uh, my mind is still needing from, it's like from work to home, there's that in-between space where your mind is kind of like, could be racing, or you just had a, a you know, the, the, the day on your job wasn't as good as you wish it was, and you're trying to figure out how do I calm down from a day's work. And so your mind is kind of all over the place. And, and I've had this happen where I'm trying to find out what to feed my mind. So I may spend money that I have no business spending, or I may, uh, maybe it's an addiction. Maybe uh, I'm just going to throw it out there. It could be anything. Uh, uh, somebody may come, come home and they say, man, I had, a, I had this is the type of day I had. So they start drinking or maybe that, maybe that's turned into an addiction or uh, maybe uh <laughs> they're dealing with pornography or they're dealing with, you know, I can call this person and they can give me what I need. And so there's this, instead of the mind becoming healthier, uh, the actuality, in actuality, there, it's like you're bringing yourself continually in a more, in a deeper state of, which could be dep uh, depression, frustration, anxiety, lack of peace. And you're trying to find that peace because, uh, at work, you have you have your mind is busy. You have something to think about. But when you get home, people don't know how miserable you are. So can you kind of talk to us about that? Like what you what uh, what you say about that? Um, can you be a little bit more specific? Do you mean in terms of um, like uh, solutions or my experience? Solutions, solutions to like um, solutions to handling. Uh, um depression like you know you you uh your math you're 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 uh, kind of medicating uh because you're not around anyone else anymore and you come home and you're down and you uh you may try to tell people about it or they don't understand but how how can a person deal with themselves after they've been around other people and they're, they're alone you know what i'm saying and they're um they're having to deal with all those issues and instead of doing healthy things to keep them, you know, uh, keep them producing um, uh, away from everybody else to, to maybe start a business or maybe um, um, uh, have fun with their kids or their wife. How can they do that? Like how can they produce better instead of going home and, doing something that's more negative that's bringing them down um there there's a couple of levels to that and i think we talked about this before when we were kind of talking about mm -hmm. doing this but um one of those levels which is a big level is awareness and, right. and and what i mean by awareness is you know everyone's usually aware of the thoughts that might be going through their minds or uh the feelings that they feel in their body or even the emotions that they're feeling but um, the average person, we have this idea that we are picking and choosing, like, oh, you need to let that go, or you just need to move on, when in reality, um, at a basic level, feelings, thoughts, and sensations are created uh, to, to help you stay alive and thrive. So a lot of this mm -hmm. extra activity that people have going on, these racing thoughts, um, emotions, they're, they're really from the part, the strongest part of your system that are trying to keep you here and thriving. And so if we're aware of that part, then we're aware mm -hmm. of where, what our goal is. So if a person's coming home and they're self-medicating, the question would be, what is my goal? Because in reality, whether we have good or bad um, or what we would consider bad coping skills, they're all coping skills and we're using them for a reason and there is a benefit to them on some level. So we have to ask ourselves, what are we looking for? What is the benefit that we're getting out of this use or whatever this other thing is? And that will help us gain awareness of, the, of where we really want to go. If you don't understand what you're trying to accomplish in the beginning, then it would be much harder to get there. Does that make sense? Right, right, and I I think for me, what I'm wanting to do out of what I'm what uh with the education of certain things for the community is I want to help people to become a better them, you know, um, uh, so 
that's the reason why I want to talk about this this uh, subject on mental health is because sometimes we we uh, we don't want to take that extra step to become better in our finances or with our children or with our spouses or with our families or whatever or maybe you're like I don't you know maybe spiritually you don't want to I'm like I'm good on church because they I'm going to have to do this 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 and this. Uh, but what we don't have to, we don't understand is that that's in a lot of areas. I don't, you know, I don't want to go there today because I'm feeling this way. When in actuality, that's we don't know that that's a part of the the problem. Is that um, when you should be enjoying your life, you are because you're medicating. You know, you said coping, mm -hmm. coping skills. We're coping, but we're coping in a way that's actually keeping us from a better life and, and experiencing life better. And I, I and, and now you can tell me this because when we talked about the wandering mind, I talked about frustration, anxiety, lack of peace. What do you say, do you do you believe that uh, there's still much more to life than coming home and then saying, I just don't wanna go do that today because this is how I feel. Instead of saying, well, it's not about how I feel. I'm in control of how I feel. I'm going to go and enjoy my life. I'm going to enjoy it and become productive in life. And I and so my thing is, I wonder if people know that that's human. That's actually the human. That's the human species, or that's who we are. We're we're per, we're we're to produce. Do we see the beauty in life? Do we see the beauty in the world, or do we just come and say, you know? You know, I cope cope with negative coping mechanisms. Say, ah, I'm good. I don't want to go do that today. And then someone is looking, and I'm just I'm just speaking from experience. I'm looking like, why don't you want to? Like, you know, what's what's the issue? You used to love this. You used to like going to baseball games. You know, uh, you used to. It doesn't start to be a bunch of used tos, and and then. And then you're trying to, you, you know, you may, and you're trying to get those people to snap out of whatever they're in and they may not realize that they may have fallen into a, a depression. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, because there's so much to do in life. You know what I mean? And so uh, I just, what that, that was, I mean, that's why I wanted to bring that up and about uh, the medication um, because there's good, there's good, uh, ways to cope right so what what would you say are some good ways to cope so that we don't fall you know some i know what it's like to be in depression and not and not really know that i'm really that deep it could be i'm that deep in depression so what do you what are some good coping skills that we can do instead of uh um uh, the negative ones that we don't know that are actually keeping us from the desires that are in our heart they're there but we can't even get up to do it because mentally we've we've put all these other things that didn't come from, you know, and I want to mention God, but I want you to see this in a big scope. I don't want to, I'm not trying to beat anybody by, in the head, but God made you for beauty. He made you to go out and experience life, take a walk, look at the sun and say, wow, how beautiful that sunset is, you know, um, to take a run or uh, go to a, a good concert or whatever. And you, and and God created us to go out and explore and live life and build businesses, but these other negative coping mechanisms is keeping us from that. So what are the positive things we can do to get out of that mindset so we can go and, and be productive? Because of, cause, cause the Bible does say, um, be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. So what do, you, what do you say for the, the, what are the positive coping mechanisms we can use? Whew, that's such a loaded question. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I say that because um and and i tr i've worked really hard over the past several years to move away a little bit from the idea of bad and good coping skills because mm -hmm. in reality um the average person is, is not looking to do harm to themselves, right? Like when they're right. using or uh, using coping skills that isn't getting them closer to their goal, it's not necessarily about for them, at least in my experience talking to people, it's not necessarily about um, not wanting more, but it goes back to the awareness because a lot of it is mm -hmm. just survival. I'm in survival right. mode. And it's, you know, think about it this way. 
you know, if we go back to an evolutionary standpoint, it, you know, it, as a man, you're outside, you're, you're hunting game, right? And you see mm -hmm. a, a, a lion in the distance. It's really not beneficial for you to be sitting there thinking about uh, strategizing and analyzing the situation, right? At this time, your mm -hmm. system needs you to be, you know, your adrenaline to be pumping, your body's getting stronger, preparing for you to be safe, right? Right. So mine doesn't need to be analyzing and thinking about how great life is in that moment. And so what I'm right. trying to say is that most of the time what is happening for people is the reason they're self-medicating self is because the system in the body, which we'll call fight or flight, right? That fight or flight part right. is still on. And that's activated mm -hmm. through different things, you know, activated through traumas, right? So we've had traumas in our lives. And then just going about our day, stuff is touching that trauma and the system is getting this idea that we're in danger. And so mind doesn't slow down. We get racing heartbeats. We get all these sensations that mimic the idea that there is a threat. So mm -hmm. my my response to especially anxiety, racing thoughts and things like that is to find a way to get the message to the brain that it is time to calm down. Because right. when you're in fight or flight brain, the part of the brain that actually rationalizes really well is it goes down, right? That part mm -hmm. of the brain is not working effectively. So that's why when you see on TV or you see anyone who's having a panic attack, the first thing a person assisting them does is say, okay, slow down and let's take deep, slow breaths. Because when right. you're running away from something, you're not taking, you're not doing that, right? You're not thinking about that. You're it not taking slow, deep breaths, right? When you're taking slow, right. deep breaths, brain gets the message that, okay, this is the time that we need to slow down rationalize body doesn't need to be 10 times stronger than it normally is on any given day mm -hmm. do you see what i mean right. so we need to get yep. the message to the system that it's time to calm down and that mm -hmm. can come from prayer meditating taking deep breaths writing right going out in nature walking mm -hmm. exercising mm -hmm. i mean there are tons of different things and everyone's going to be different but the whole point is um is that the messages, you know, when, when you have anxiety, that's just the brain telling you that there's something that needs your attention and, and there's a threat. You want brain to understand there is no threat. Right. Right. So, yep. I, I mean, I'm going a little deeper in that, but that's my perspective. And that's why I don't, I pull away a little bit from good and bad coping skills because a person mm -hmm. using a coping skill is using that either one, because at some point it was working or yeah. two, because in their fight, in their fight to just find safety, they're they're looking mm -hmm. for the quickest and most effective thing from that level of awareness, right? right? So right. what we need is right. to increase awareness mm -hmm. of what's actually needed and what's of value, and from there we can actually start to slow down and notice other opportunities, other things that could be helpful. So I hope that I, I hope that answered your question. Yeah. Give me a second, cause I got something that's <laughs> bothering me. Okay. <laughs> and if I don't, if I don't get rid of this, so as you do that, Shauna asks, can people mistake exhaustion for depression? Um, I'm a lot busier now than I used to be when I was free spirit in college. Now as a full time wife and mom with a full time job, I just get tired. Should I just make myself go and trust that I'll push through being tired and enjoy myself, honey? <laughs> Thank you for that question. Let me tell you something yeah, about yeah. And, and this and I like that question because it goes into what we're talking about in terms of brain chemistry, right? So when you're depressed, when you're feeling depressed, let me choose my wording carefully. When you're feeling depressed, uh, chemicals in the brain that typically are there are higher when you are thriving, creative, making good choices, happy, joyful, those chemicals are, you know, endorphins, they're, they're lower, right? So that's what medication helps with. It helps to get the chemicals in the brain increased that need to be increased and get things balanced. When you're tired, you can get the same effect and you guys can do the research on this. I'm not going to like you know, name different scientists or anything like that. But if you go do the research, you'll find that exhaustion, if they look at a person's brain who is exhausted, 
they will find very similar activity as a person who is depressed or using mm -hmm. or something like that because it just it really messes up brain chemistry so sleeping is really important i know personally when i had my daughter and i was going through that early stage of newborn when you get little sleep um i was experiencing all types of things vertigo um even feelings of depression things like that because of chemicals that are trying to stabilize in the brain so right. when it comes to things like that, I would say, you know, sleep is your best medicine. It's not something mm -hmm. that, you know, you want to sleep through. You run yourself into sleep debt and it only makes the situation worse. So when you're mm -hmm. exhausted in sleep, then sleep and self-care becomes a really high priority. Right. Uh, I want to throw something in there. I know what I started doing and I didn't even realize it. I look kind of started for me, I started listening to my body. And what we're talking about is kind of, these are, this is stuff uh, that you learn, I've had to learn over time, because like I said, I've been dealing with mental illness for three, for uh, 13 years. So I've actually learned these things, but I would come home, and this is what this still happens from time to time. I want to get out, I'll, I'll say, okay, I'm going to go to sleep right now. And my, it's almost as if my brain is like, not yet, not yet. I just need, I just need you to think. And I need you to, I need you to just calm down and take in what happened today. And what, and what, and what my brain has begun to do is solve problems before I actually am ready to actually, I mean, take the, turn the lights out and go to sleep, sleep. Mm -hmm. So there are certain ways that you can, because sometimes it's like, but I don't want to go to sleep. <laughs> I want to do this. I want to do that. There's still, you're still, you, you, you're you wanting to do things. You're Maybe you're you wanting to be still be productive while you should be asleep. So what, what I've done for what's happened with me is I've, I've allowed my mind to just solve problems to my mind says, okay, now I'm ready to go to sleep. <laughs> and I, I, still, I still get, I still get rest. Um, I still get rest that way because I am a, I am a, thinker i'm a big thinker i have this nonprofit. i have open mic nights that i'm doing at each at the end of each month plus this earlier today i did a meeting for my record label and then when i got home my mind was like sleep and i was like okay let's go to sleep you know what i mean I, it's so it's and so what happens is you listen to your body and and that might mean telling some people hey honey or kids <laughs> or grandma, grandpa. I had to do that. My grandfather's birthday was yesterday. I could only spend so much time with him before I needed to come home and get my own energy so I could get up in the morning, have my record, you know, and then I, I knew I had this. Mm -hmm. So I had to, in between that time, come home, get that rest I needed. And then I was, I had enough energy now to do this. So there's, there are also times things which you can do is, Give yourself an hour, two hours, maybe even three, and you spend that time to rest your mind, to lay in the bed. You might even put the covers over you. I've done that. And it was, I felt like I should have been up. I'm like, why am I sleeping so much? But I needed it. Mm -hmm. But see, I didn't know that I was going to be doing this. So sometimes you're, what's happening is your body is getting you ready for something big. Right. Your, your mind your spirit knows something big is coming. And so it says sleep, mm -hmm. rest, something's coming. And then when you do that, you realize, oh, wow. I, you don't have to feel guilty to get your rest. I love and that. So that's the Rashana. Nicole, don't feel guilty about sleeping, even if it ends up happening all day. Because <laughs> I have had, I woke up and I'm like, oh my God, I slept. Oh my, and then, but then I'm, I say, no, I'm not gonna feel guilty. And then I say, okay, today's a new day. I, I, I have my stuff lined out. I know what I'm gonna do. I know what I'm gonna do the whole week, even until the weekend. My, my, I have my alarm is set up for every moment that I know what I'm gonna do. Right. And so I, in those moments, I know it, what's, what's next. Mm -hmm. And then I know in those moments when it's time to sleep. You know, so these are disciplines that um, help you to get your you get your schedule right. 
Let your kids know. Let your husband know. <laughs> okay, y'all, it's time for my rest. I'll be back in an hour, two hours, three hours when I get back. And, and then your, 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 your husband will be like, babe, you okay? Yeah, you be all like perky and stuff. He's going he's gonna to love you better. You know, he's going to be able to be like, wow, like, Wow. I love okay, I'm gonna let her start because, getting her rest. I mean, just this past week, I've ha I had maybe two or three um, individuals that I talked to that had that feeling of that their response to me was, um, I, I just feel so lazy. And but then when we start talking about it, what it really is is that they're used to being so busy, right. and now they're giving themselves themselves time to go garden or to go sit out in the sun or to go do these things that. I guess people could consider being lazy, right? Right. But in reality, right. it's when your awareness has increased and you are able to listen to your body, then it's exactly what you said. Your body is going to tell you what it needs at any given moment. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. and, and that's, I don't know how people are going to feel about this, but this is one of the things that I'm, I feel is coming out of the whole uh, Corona shut-in thing. Mm -hmm. As people are starting to find balance because most of us are on autopilot half the time. And we think right. we've, we've learned, unfortunately, that we need to fill our time up 24 seven. But in reality, mm -hmm. what there is to do includes things that you're doing action oriented, but it also mm -hmm. includes things like giving your body rest and allowing it time to restore itself and regenerate. Right. That's exactly. also something that's just as important as doing. And I think people are now able to like sit back and recognize the benefit of that. Right. You got to, you have to restore, but I'm, I'm kind of looking at these comments. Sahara Hunt says, I swear that is so true. And then Carla Davis, that was me. Stop telling my business. <laughs> we was lazy all day today. Oh, <laughs> you got it. And that's so important. You, you, uh, you know, that's so funny. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows about Gary V, but he's a he's like a he's a he's um really and he's really into entrepreneurship. Uh, he's like a voice for this this generation when it comes to entrepreneurship and, for millennials. And he said late he said you know what he said I think that laziness is not a bad thing. Or he was saying yeah laziness. He said um, he's talking about laziness and he said that uh uh or would not even procrastination. He wasn't talking about procrastination. If I'm not mistaken, it was laziness. But he was saying that it may not be a bad thing. It could be telling you what you don't want to do, what you really don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, was, I was like, whoa. And at that time, you know, I'm going to use God for a second because that's what I believe. That's my, you know, I believe in Jesus and stuff. But I'm bringing that into perspective because I heard a message that said um, that God may want you to rest. So I actually, I was wanting to get out, but I actually spent, I, I like Instagram. So I actually spent most of my, I spent most of my evening on a Friday, maybe a Friday, Saturday evening, flipping through Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> looking at videos. And I get, I get inspired by other people and I'm following all these different people. Sometimes I go back and I have to actually unfollow people, but, um, you got to have those moments of, in, of indulgence and sometimes, sometimes that you feel rest, rest allows you to fill yourself with inspiration as well. Let me tell you something, Brenda. One of the first things I tell my clients, um, <clears throat> especially the parents, because they'll, they'll go really well, they'll, they, the child parent acting just fine. And then um, I'll have a parent call me a couple of weeks later and say, well, things were going great, but lately things are just not going great. And I'll say, okay, I need you to, I need to ask you a question. Is he or she sleepy? <laughs> hungry mm. or sick oh now that you think about it did mrs now are you sleepy hungry or sick oh now that wow. i did have a headache today okay well odds are you need to go rest there's nothing that yeah. i can do to help you until this child gets yeah. rest or get some mm -hmm. food right and so when you were talking it reminded me of that and somebody hopefully can help remind me of who this was in the bible i believe it was uh one of the one of the um, prophets who was running away. He was running away from somebody and God just told him, he was being emotional. He was saying, I just, I just want to clock out of here. And God said, take a nap. 
<laughs> right? Yeah. Go to sleep. Yeah. Right. And he slept right. and then he got up and he ate some food. Yeah. Right. So I, think, I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> it, it, there's a story, and this guy got tired. Isn't I think it's Elijah. Elijah this guy he got. That's who it is. Yeah. So please, please don't don't turn to another channel. Listen to us. We're not telling you to get saved, you know, or get to know Jesus. But it's a it's a great story. He he this dude thought he he got he got to a place where he was so weary at the with what God had asked him to do. He was going against forces that that like, you know, was trying to just there was a there was this woman who just thought she just, you know, she was on one. And you know, had had another guy bound. There's a lot going on. So he ran from her, and and God said, God like was like, yo, you need to chill out. He said, but it's I'm the only one left. He was so because he was tired. So he rested. Mm -hmm. So what God is saying is, look, you know what 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 you're, and this is this, what you have to understand is God has put this in your body, is that. Look, get some rest and I will and I will feed you, you know, your body. But your body says that same is saying that same thing It's really the God in you. God put that in you that look, just get your rest and I'll I'll feed you. I will give you what you need. You know, God, I'm going to go ahead and go there because I see people leaving. So we're just going to go ahead and preach for a second. That's fine. Uh, God. um feed you with what you need if you get rest mm -hmm. he'll tell you where to go he'll tell you what you need he'll say look you being emotional you know and so this guy this guy elijah he rested ate some food took and took a you know took a nap in the cave got out the cave god and here's the thing what happened was god uh talked to him the bible says he couldn't hear him in the thunder because sometimes we think we can hear god with our loud music Sometimes we think we can we can hear what we're supposed to do um, when we're around all our children and our and our kids or our husbands or our wives. We think we can, um, uh, you know, if I'm doing something, I'll be able to 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 get this anxiety out of me. But God made him rest, and the Bible says once he finally shut shut himself down, <laughs> shut off. God spoke to him in a still, small voice. And what that means is God, God is, it told, was really saying, just be still. I will talk to you. So he said in a still, he started speaking to him in a still, small voice. So what you have to do as a believer and what you have to do as a person, because God designs you this way, is you got to sit still. And uh, many times that is the only way you're going to hear from God. Many times that's the only way you're going to understand what's going on in your body. Many times that's only that's the only way you're going to understand what's going on with your kids. If you and I'm gonna talk to my to the mothers. If you shut down, shut yourself off for a little bit. Tell your kids I'll be gone for a little bit. I need to get some rest. Your kid, you'll find your you'll you'll be by yourself quiet, and your kids will get quiet. Because you got quiet. Mm -hmm. They're running off of your energy because they still they don't know how to take care of themselves yet until you come. I want I want to ask I want to add something in there. You know, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You go mentioned ahead. the um, you know, the the Bible, and we could go to the Bible, but also, I mean, it's very uh, it could it's very practical, right? I mean, you guys saw those mm -hmm. commercials where somebody's you know acting out in the back seat and someone says uh you must be hungry here uh have a snickers right and then oh okay i feel like myself again right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's right, like right, that right. awareness the awareness you you're being able to bring it down and be aware not only of your thoughts but what's happening in your body those are your signals right Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. I have people come to me and say, this is going wrong, that's going wrong, this wrong, I say, how much sleep have you had? You know, I ask practical questions like that wow. because right, you right, know, right. two weeks from before you had all these ideas and you were able to, you were able to produce. And now all of a sudden you're not producing at all. Well, let's go to the basics. I always go back to the basics. Have you eaten well? Mm. What you ate, did it sit right with your body? Right. Have you slept yeah. well? 
Mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. all these different and are you feeling well physically do you have a headache are your sinuses clogged up you know all these different things that affect the mind's ability to kind of you know it's proven mm -hmm. that they they um they mimic the computer off of the human brain right <laughs> and so the human brain is the most sophisticated computer ever yeah and it, yeah. you've heard of an it person calling you you call them and and you say, my computer is glitching. It won't, it won't go. It won't do what it needs to do. And the IT person taps into your computer and says, well, it's because you have 15 different programs. And you might be yeah. thinking, well, I don't see anything on my screen. IT person says, well, they're definitely affecting what you're doing. Yeah. So we need to it, delete, 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 delete. Shut it down. Restart it. Come back up. And all of a sudden, things are running smoothly. Wow. Right. So would you, yeah. And would you uh, say that that's the subconscious mind? Absolutely. Like we've, we've pushed, we've pushed these files into the back of our minds. And then if we don't spend time um, sitting down, getting rest or met, can I say meditating, even meditation. And, and I would say there's nothing wrong. There's, the, the meditation is just simple. It's you calming down, uh, and, and, and really saying, okay, I need a moment to figure out what's going on with me. Why am I feeling this way? And like you said, that's what you help people do as a licensed counselor. You help people to know how to do that. Um, so uh, would you say that that's what that is? It's like, uh, even with God, it's like, he can go into the back of your mind and say, is this, is that, is that, is this? And then there's these files being deleted. Uh, and and you even as a even as a person because you're designed this way that in being still even i even believe in doing something else that you like you said we said earlier they wanted some people wanted to be a, they wanted to go gardening or go for a walk those files in the back of your subconscious and, and help me out with this there's deletions taking place is it, it could that be possible that there's some deleting taking place while you're doing this. You have, you're able, those things are able to come to the forefront and you're able to deal with those things. Um, in a lot of cases, release them. Because if you're sitting yeah. outside, you know, if you're sitting outside in nature, looking at the abundance in nature and you're looking at a beautiful flower, subconscious mind gets the picture that it's not time to be sitting here overthinking about that over there. Right. right? We're right. in the middle of abundance. Like right. We are present. What you just said is, is be still. That's called being present. And a lot of the mm -hmm. times the problem with the mix up of things in the background is stuff that either already happened. So therefore it doesn't exist anymore. Technically. Right. Wow. Only thing that exists right now is what's happening right now. Exactly. But we are exactly. busy in our minds pulling up files that we made up from things that might mm -hmm. happen or might not happen in the future right. or reviewing right. files of things that happened in the past that really have no, you know, there's nothing else to be done. So when you get mm -hmm. present, then what comes up is what is there of value to do and what who would have been value, what would have been valuable to have done. That's the only thing. Right. Right. That's good. Yeah. So if we uh, are, it, so it's kind of like deletion, but it's more just like wiping out. It's almost like, you know, you're present, you're in this moment. So mind is actually able to attend to what needs to be done because subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between if it's happening or not. So when you're thinking about it, that's why you can think about something that doesn't happen or hasn't happened yet and get the emotions as if it has. Because mm, subconscious right. mind is saying, okay, well, what, would you, what do we need? It's on your mind, so obviously there's something we need to do about it. Mm -hmm. That's right? right. That's true. And right. so that's right. where we get to clearing all that out so that we can be present. And when we're present, the more present we are, the more we are able to access what is of value. That's good. And I want to, I'm kind of reading some of the quotes. Carla Davis said, God will give you rest. My favorite quote, I remember now. Yeah, you're right. God will give you rest. And rest, can I say something about rest and sleep? And this is something my pastor says, is that sleep and rest are not the same thing. You can find rest in a walk. You can find rest in writing. Absolutely. Maybe you're a writer. You can find rest in a hobby. You can find rest in maybe you like to go out and take photographs. 
uh, there's so many different ways, or maybe there's a certain album you like to listen to. There, you can find rest in that. Mm -hmm. There are certain ways to find rest. Um, I know uh, there's a, a, a scripture that's been coming to mind lately, and maybe we can kind of talk about, maybe we can kind of switch a little bit, because we've been talking about this, about getting rest. Um, uh, but there's a scripture that I like in the Bible that says, um, uh, let, th let your thoughts be few. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let, I'm sorry, let your words, because really they translate it to your thoughts translate to words, right. but it says let your words be few. And it's in the Ecclesiastes. And I got a picture of that on my job because I'm around other people. And sometimes you can feel energy coming from other people that you just don't like, you know, just let's just be real. The reason why two people in one room may not like each other is because of energy. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't like her for some reason. <laughs> right, ladies? Or my, my, my boys, y'all like, yo, bro, something about that dude that I don't like, you know? And um, so we're, now we're going to, we talk, we've been talking about just when it's you. But now, kind of, let's talk about because I don't know. How, I think we may have been doing this for maybe a good thirty minutes. What if we talk about when it's two people together? Like, so, uh, for instance, you you were by yourself. You got still. You got your rest. You like, yeah, nothing can hold me down. And then you and now it's time to get back out there and get amongst people. <laughs> how do you keep it? Now that we talked about how to get it. How do you keep it? You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> what I would say is this. As you, as you begin to practice being still for yourself and being present, what happens is that becomes a lifestyle. Right. right? You're practicing this on your own at first, but then you'll start to notice that you can bring that same kind of awareness into your everyday life. So then when you're in the office, and a coworker says something crazy to you, instead of being triggered, there comes right. a response because I'm aware right. in this moment and I'm not, you know, triggered. And what I mean by triggered is, you know, I'm reacting. Mm -hmm. Reacting mm -hmm. is like more impulse. Like this person says something crazy to me, bam, react, right? right. But when right. awareness is there, you know, mm -hmm. you've enjoyed and you've learned to appreciate and respect the peace that is you. Because when you're doing that, when you're sitting with self and being present, that calm and peace feeling you have, that's at the center of who you are. Right. So then right. you take that out dealing with people and it becomes a priority not to disturb that. Yes. Right? Yes. And you yes. have the power not to allow someone to disturb that or not. And that's, that's, right. that's the difference. So I have a lot of people, well, this person made me feel this way or that person made me feel that way, you know? Mm -hmm. And so the question is, and this, could, this goes a little bit deeper into what I would do with some of my clients, but, you know, helping a person understand that for one, uh, most people's responses to you are not even about you mm. <laughs> to begin with. If you could get that skill down and understand that, then... Um, reactions wow. reactions come down and now we're just aware so i'm aware that right. this person has some energy that is not linking up with mine and i can make mm -hmm. a choice about what would be of value to do in that moment right and the bible like the bible calls it offense like you can become offended at what somebody else has done even though they may, it may have had, like you said, had nothing to do with you. And uh, many, many, many times it actually all the time when people come home, when people come to work, uh, they're not, they're not, they're not really thinking, well, you can't have those who really are, you can have somebody, you can't have people who are after you. You can't, it's possible, mm -hmm. but, but we don't, but here's the thing. That's, that's, that is not the first thing that I would say that we think about coming to the job and then those around us. Uh, say, for instance, some, you say, hey, um, you know, you're at your desk and someone's at their desk and you're like, hey, you know, I can't find my pen. Do you have an extra? And then they say, here, it just throws you the pen. And then you're like, 
what was that about? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and at that moment, like you said, it's either trigger or response. I could, I could say they did that because they're mad at me. They did, or you, or, and I've had this happen where I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with them. But here's the thing. Is that even my, my, like, is that my, that's, is that none of my, that's how is that any of my business? <laughs> because now I'm taking on, it's possible for me to be taking on their energy now and trying to figure out their own, their problem. Mm -hmm. When, who's to say that I'm not the one to help them, uh, to help the day go smoothly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So <laughs> what would you say about that? It's like, you know, hey, go do this. And you're like, what? You know what I'm saying? And you know, you got the job, you like and you and you think they're being rude, but they not they may not even know that they were being rude. Exactly. But then you allow that to disturb disturb your peace. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Instead of instead of, of saying, Okay, that was that was rude, but oh well. You know what right. I mean? Or it, it you know, and then you 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 I and this is what I've learned. You get in the habit of not getting offended with people, and before you know it, the peace that you carry everywhere you go is so strong, you you actually end up finding something, and this is what I just just out of my um uh my experience, you start to actually have good days with these people mm -hmm. because something is being released. And I've learned that after we talked about this, uh, I saw on Instagram, as I was talking about being at my time of rest and my time of this, you know, of vegging or whatever. Um, I saw a <laughs> quote that said that sound goes from body to body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would think frequency that thinks of, to me, that thinks of, I think of frequency. I think of the mind it goes from body to body. Mm -hmm. So if I make a decision, because sometimes, and I'm going to use the devil, I'm going to use, I'm going to use the devil, Satan, or whatever, or evil, or, you know, if you're out there, you know, just hear, hear me out on this. The enemy may up the ante. Oh, they didn't, they didn't fall for that volume of negativity. Let me turn up the volume a little bit. And then something else happens. And then you then you don't let that get get to you, and then something else happens. But then you reach. Then I think I really believe, and I, I'm talking about volume because I'm still talking about body and how volume and sound goes from one person to one person. When someone does something that you that says to you, that was kind of harsh. That's volume. But I believe there's a greater volume of peace that says, okay. That was chaotic, but I'm gonna raise my level, my volume of peace by not saying anything. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think so, I love I love that you're using frequency. And when you think about it in those terms, and this is why I say awareness is so important, because whoever is strongest in their stance is the one that's going to overtake the other. Mm -hmm. Right? We talked about this. Yeah, we talked and about so, this. And what I mean by that is the average person, most people are not walking around aware. And that's why you have mm -hmm. a bunch of reactions. But when you get one person who's reacting and one person who's responding, it is usually the responder that is guiding that interaction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the greater right. your awareness, the more you're right. able to stay in that place then you become the person that's steering most of these interactions anyway. Because what, ha I, and tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure that everybody, well, not everybody, but some of you have had this experience where uh, you go uh, maybe out and you're at the store and the cashier is being rude. Um, and you have two ways of responding or reacting, right? They're being rude, so you be rude, right? Uh, oh, you just not you just gonna lay the money on the counter? You're not gonna put it in my hand? 
uh, ma'am, I'm not even thinking about that right now. It's other people. Uh, now we got the manager over and, you know, it's an issue versus, yeah. okay, she's being rude, not looking you in your face, kind of throwing your stuff all over the place. And, you know, you look and you say, wow, it's getting late. I, I bet you've been here for a while. Right. Now, all of a sudden, you you know, I'm looking you in your face. You're right. I'm just so tired. I can't wait to be y'all. I can understand, honey. And now, all of a sudden, energy has been shifted. Yeah. Got yeah. that? You because her you. response, to, she don't know me. Her response to me was not about right. me. Yeah. So yeah. now, it's about either something happened with a manager or the previous customer said something crazy or I got five kids at home and I ain't figured out what's for dinner or it could be anything. Mm -hmm. But if I mm -hmm. respond to her with presence and awareness, then she is almost forced to come into my presence because I'm not meeting her at her frequency. I'm not meeting her at that level. Right, right. But if you catch yourself yeah. on a day when your frequency is low and you know instinctively that this person has more <laughs> oomph than mm -hmm. you, you just need to mm -hmm. get out of Dodge. <laughs> you just need to try you gotta, again tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Just hush up. And say to yourself, man, I gotta do better. You gotta find a way to get out of you gotta find a way to get out of it. Uh it and that's what I mean. Like you, say as little as possible. <laughs> right. Let your words be few. And that's what I learned is that if you're feeling you can might you might some people say, well, they just don't under they must not understand. They did all that, they must not understand. Don't worry about them not understanding. Let your words be few because they're not going to understand you until y'all frequencies are like this. But if both of y'all go rise up and y'all, y'all, it's over. You're acting like animals. Like you're literally acting like it, uh, you're no longer acting as human beings. Mm -hmm. We as human beings, look at the word humble. Uh, and this came to me um, some years ago. Uh, human and when, why words to connect the way they do? You have human, you have humble, you have humility. Why, why do those words connect? Because you're human. What, is hu what does humility mean? It means human ability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can be humble in that moment and just hush up. And I, and I want to get to Carlos because she had a question. She said, question, whose fault is it if I'm annoyed? <laughs> Is that their is that their fault for annoying me, or my fault for allowing it to annoy me? My response. Okay, so uh, that's just it, Carla. Your weapon, and I know you probably never heard this before, but I've started walking in this. Your best weapon is your kindness, but one of your greatest weapons when it's really hostile in a hostile situation and you're annoyed. Uh, they, you're annoyed, but it, but your response, your weapon of response is your silence. So uh, that's what you really, that's what you really want to say. And it's like, well, I'm not saying nothing. Yes, you're saying more than you could ever imagine. Uh, remember, what is, what does it say about the percentage of, of, uh, uh, percentage of your words and your um uh and your uh what you say in your body movement I don't even know the percentage but if I'm not mistaken you say more in your in your in your actions than you do with your words mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they may have annoyed you and people can annoy yeah people can annoy you um your own I'm a leader other people may you can have people under you who annoy you who will annoy you but uh your 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 best weapon is is in your silence because you and I and I'll throw I'm gonna throw God in there but I'm also throw in the fact that uh you um the best weapon being your silence you can actually pull away with a better answer and I'm a, I'm gonna share this with you it's a story about Jesus and it's a story about uh a uh, an adulterous late woman and what happened was in this story uh. There is a what they call Pharisees and Sadducees. They were of the, they they were law people, and they believed that you know they knew better than Jesus. Jesus had just stepped on the scene. They were hating 
they were supposed to really be believing in who Jesus was, but they weren't. And they thought they knew better and all this other stuff. And they actually caught a woman in adultery and they brought her to Jesus and they threw her at his feet. And then they all said to him, what do you say we should do to her? The Bible, the, the law says, the law of Moses said we should stone her. It really what it means, they would say we should kill her. This is what I mean by hostility and chaos around you. Jesus was so good at knowing how to be quiet in hostile situations. The Bible says that he bent down and started writing in the, in the, in the sand or in the, in the dirt. Now, I'm not going to get into no philosophies about all that. Um, I've made it. I, this is what I, I depict from that. Jesus knew that if he did not calm himself down, because Jesus could have like went off on these dudes for doing that to her. That was his daughter. That was God's daughter. And these guys is, about to, is, is throwing her down at his feet. You know what I'm saying? Treating her wrong. He could have got like mad upset, you know, but he knew that if he did not calm down and they tried to do this to Jesus a lot, they would try to get him out of his, out of his peace. And Jesus had to, had to literally be quiet for a moment. If you read the Bible and every time his, his every time he responded back to them, they had to walk away. They literally had to walk away. So in this situation, Jesus bent down and started writing in the dirt. And I really believe what he was doing was being still. He was letting his words be few and wanting to know, okay, God, what do you say I should say to these people? Or what should I do in this instance? And uh, the Bible says he got up when he was done being still. He got up and he said, he who is without sin cast the first stone. And the Bible says from the least to the greatest, they have to drop their stones and walk away. Because Jesus knew how to be still. And he, and he also knew that if he had given in to their hostility, they would have tried to kill him and her. But, Jesus, but he could not let that happen. Because he had a goal. That was to die on a cross for men's sins and rise again on the third day. He had to get to that goal. Many times people tried to kill Jesus, uh, throw him off a cliff, all kinds of stuff. But they couldn't do it for one reason because he knew how to respond. And it's the same way with us. People have gotten killed. People have lost their lives in hostile situations because they did not know how to shut their mouths. They did, I've, I know what it's like to be in a situation. I, 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 some of us, I know what it's like. I felt like this, I, whether it really was that way or not, where you're treated unfairly on a job and we don't know how to be still and we lose that job uh, because we probably should have got out of Dodge a long time ago or whatever the case may be, or now it's a hostile environment. We can't find our peace anymore. We're, now we're yelling, whatever, we lose the job or we get into it with our parents because we didn't hush up. Even though our parents said something to us, I am an adult, you don't talk to me that way. There's so many different things that, but we, but we get out of our human ability. We get out of humility and we miss, we miss the whole situation. We miss the whole thing. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, that, that's just, that's a story, you know, that you could take Carla and that, help, that helps out anything. And just you know imagine, I mean? just imagine being a part of that scene, right? Where you, everybody's coming up, everybody's yelling, throwing this lady down at his feet and all extra. And then he's just right. like calmly gets down in the sand and starts writing in the sand. Everybody's like, what's wrong with him? <laughs> exactly. And that's what ha that, a lot of times that happens. People are like, they didn't even trip out. Right. You ever had anybody, somebody else come up to you after that person left who was tripping, come to you and they say, yo, you you handled that pretty well. Yes. You ever had that happen? Yes. And yeah, people, yeah. It, 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 Other it people. really helps turn the mirror around. What I mean by that right. is, you know, a person who's coming at you, right, because they're triggered or they have something going on, when you respond in a way that they aren't expecting, it almost turns the mirror around. So if you say, um, 
you know, if you start cursing me out, okay, you this, you that, you that. And I say, Brandon, you seem a little angry. How can mm -hmm. I help you? I didn't mean to make you angry. Then right, right. Mira turns around and Brandon all of a sudden becomes aware that I just acted a, a complete whatever, right? Yeah. And, and now that's shining brighter to me and I can adjust myself because this person didn't join me in my stance. Right, exactly. But when you join someone in their stance, what, how, how often have you heard this? Well, this person's going off on this person. Stop yelling at me. You stop yelling at me. Now we both just going back and forth talking about how each other's yelling at each other. <laughs> yep. 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 We just gave each other permission to act however, right? We did. We did. And it's hard. To, it is. Once it gets started, it is hard to walk away. Uh, I mean, the calm one is always viewed as the crazy one. LOL. But you're not crazy. And you know what your mind, this is what, and here's, this is what you got to be careful of. Because once you, once you make, start making a decision not to say something, your mind uh, or we could say an outside force, we could say the devil, whatever, there's going to be something that's going to tell you why you didn't say something? You know you're being crazy. You something's gonna be trying to try to get you to keep saying, it, trying to say it, and you gotta start. And you you just one day you get to the place you get through eight hours of work without nothing, you know, getting nobody getting upset, no nothing, nobody getting mad or nothing, because you were the you were the one who said I'm going to take control of this. We're gonna take control of this atmosphere together. At, I can't say that one person does it by themselves. At the you know end of saying? the day, I think it, it's awareness, but then also caring about how you feel. Because yeah. if you're in the mm -hmm. workplace and you have hostile situation or you have people who talk to you any kind of way or you know that there is a possibility of being triggered, you have to care more about maintaining your peace right. than you do about defending yourself. And half mm -hmm. the time we're defending ourselves and it's not really a situation where we need to be defending ourselves. And so that's what I mean when I say triggered to me just means that somewhere in the back of your mind, that subconscious part is reading this as threat. Exactly. So can we now read more accurately what is actually a threat? This person mm -hmm. looking at me in a weird way, is that actually a threat? <laughs> and these are all, I want to kind of bring this full back circle because these are all things that things like medication if you need it rest medication eating well rest. knowing where eating you well. are in your body will help you right. maintain this level of awareness you can't right, have this right, level right. of awareness when brain chemistry is just all over the place because you haven't slept well for two days or you know you see what I mean exactly. so it brings it full circle Right. And would you say that awareness, more awareness of yourself happens, the more you can learn to be quiet, <laughs> you know, in those hostile situations, you become even more aware. Yes. And then, yes. you know, I think, mm -hmm, I think being more... still and being, I don't want to call it being still because you can be still and not be present. But I think being present is a mm -hmm. lost art. Yeah. Most people yeah. don't know how to be present because we're busy if we're not working and doing other things, keeping ourselves busy, then we are online and we're scrolling, looking through, thinking about other people's stuff and what they have going on. You know, so yeah, mind, well. mind is not used to being present. If we can get back to being present, that awareness goes way up. Because when you're it present, goes. like I said, you get back to the peace. That's who you are. Right, that, right, like right. That peace, that serenity, all of that stuff, that is who you are in essence so you get closer mm -hmm. to who you are closer to your creator the more you do that the more you're more aware when it you're being pulled away from that and you have to care mm -hmm. not to be pulled away from that and so then you're able to actually find the solutions that get you back to that versus take you further mm -hmm. away from that right uh and one thing i want to say to everybody who's listening that what we're talking about takes you to a new level in life you start wanting to, you, all of a sudden, you want to own, you start wanting to own your own business. You start wanting to take care of your kids better. You start wanting to treat your husband, your wife better, your relationships with your family. Uh, so many different things begin to happen um, through what we're talking about. And so we've been talking about awareness of thoughts. We talked about rest and bringing everything full circle. 
and I don't know exactly. I'm on my phone. Let me see something real quick. It's eight forty three. I think we started what at what time do you think we start at? I can't even tell you, Brandon. <laughs> it's, it's that's okay. But we, I mean, there's a few more points. We talked about D. We didn't talk about DNA. Um. Uh. Di the diagnosis. We talked about having the most power in a situation. But um. I, I I wanted to see what we could we could say. I want to I want to I want to bring something up, and this is it mm -hmm. lending itself to the stigma behind mental health, right? Because I think that's something we talked before, and I, right. you know, the average person really does not have a true understanding of what tuning to and catering to your mental health means. Um, right. You know, in my opinion, you know, everyone knows if you live long enough, life is hard. Right? There's a lot we take on a lot just having this experience. So, um, mental health, in my opinion, should actually be similar to people who go to the doctor and get a checkup just to make i mean you're yeah. going to the doctor you don't have any pains in your body but you know to go mm -hmm. just to check up yep. right yep. and so yep. maintaining and understanding that mental health is all about making sure that just like the body needs to be functional brain needs to be functional and there are things mm -hmm. that interfere with that just through living life Yes. And so if we can get past the stigma and people can understand what mental health is actually about, it's mm -hmm. all, uh, you know, we, we get to mental illness and then it becomes about mental illness. Right. Yep. But I, a friend yep. of mine, a really good friend of mine said something re recently that just put it all into perspective for me. And she, uh, she was talking about a person who she was, tr who was saying, I want to have, I want to see a therapist, but I'm not crazy. And what she said is, you know, it's actually healthy people that see therapists. Mm. The healthy mind can recognize, okay, something is up. I need to go get assistance with this, right? right. So if we right. switch that stigma and understand that actually brain is doing something very right when brain recognizes that it needs some assistance, it needs assistance. functioning better. That's right. You know, that is so good. That's that's obviously a technology that God gave us in our brains mm -hmm. is to know when we need help. Right. Uh, but but like you said, in society, when you start saying, hey, man, I need some help. You know, it's like, what do you you know, what do you mean you need help? You know what I'm saying? Some people can look at that the wrong way. But um, but going to work each day, dealing with people who are who are. Um, now you can, I believe it's, now here's the thing about what I believe, and I believe in the word of God, and the Bible says, and I just read this, and I wrote it down, to strive for the mastery of keeping your body under subjection, you know, to God, or to keep keep your body under subjection, I actually, uh, I think it's on the book that I have here, but it says you can you can strive for the mastery to keep, to have control over your body. And Paul was saying this uh, because <laughs> there's a lot. He, he knew that there's a lot going on in the world. And the way he, um, the example he gave was a uh, was a runner. They strive for uh, the mastery. They strive to be best. He says, well, he says, so when a runner runs, he runs to win. You can do this every day. How does a CEO become a CEO of their own company uh, and bring in millions of dollars? They mastered the mind. So it is, if, if, if the Bible says it's possible, it's, you know, what I believe. If the Bible says it's possible, it's possible. And other, here's the other thing. Other people in other religions believe it is possible to master the mind. Um, you know, so I, I, I do believe that it is, I hit, and I want to talk to anybody who's dealt with mental illness, or you know someone who does. You, I said this in a post, and you can go read it. You are the greatest candidate to do more than some of the people around you. That they, I'm not saying that they can't do just as much as you, but what I'm trying to do is I want to help people who deal with, who have this problem with anxiety, lack of peace, frustration. You can master, if you master your mind, there is so much more you can do. 
And I read in the Bible how uh, Jesus was given a story of one person with one talent, one person with two, another person with five, one person with one hid his gift. So this is what I want to say to those who are dealing with mental situations. You are gifted. So you have to fight not to hide your gift, even if what you're going through takes you down some roads where you say, you don't talk to me like that and all that and all this. You might go through that a little bit, but there comes a day where I believe that you can, you can get to the place where you master keeping your mind so you can walk in all the gifts that God has given you. God, but God, this, this, this uh, man had given all these talents to, his, to these three men. He left. When he came back, he asked, what did you do with your talents? The one with the one talent, the Bible says he hid it. And he said, and then the Bible says because of that, he was going to be, he would be tormented. So what I'm saying to those who are dealing with mental illness is that people, there may be some people who just don't get it. So this is a moment to turn your life around. This is a moment that you, to go for it all, go for it all. Do whatever you got to do. I would say give your life to Christ if you don't know him. Do everything you can to get your, get your mind to a place where you can do and become everything that God called you to be. Because that's, that's, it starts right in your brain. And I believe you master your mind. There is nothing you cannot do. For God, there's nothing you can't do for your family, for your friends. There's nothing you can't do for the world, your community. You've been wanting to do stuff for people for a long time, but you have an attitude, or we haven't had, or we've been, we ain't deal with that attitude. So it, it's hard for people to want to help us to get stuff going, or we don't, we don't know where to go or how to get it done. But but if you master that mind, there's nothing you can do. Right, right. So, yeah. So I just. Um, um, I wanted people to know about that. I brought um, Kay Nicole on to talk about mental health. And is there anything else, Kay, that you wanna you wanna add to the to the viewers or anything like that? Um, I don't think so. I think you did a really lovely job of explaining. I appreciate it. Um, how how important and beneficial it is to actually start to include mental health as a part of your overall wellness routine yeah right yeah yeah you do, you um, do. so so all I would say is that you know a lot of the times it's, it's education because we may know we're dealing with something but we may not understand exactly what that is so when you say anxiety and people see that as weakness in reality anxiety is the brain's way of making you stronger it's just doing it in a, in a situation that is not needed and so that you know if you understand that then it takes the stigma away of feeling like something's wrong with you Mm -hmm. um, you're yeah you're being stretched mm -hmm. you're being stretched mm -hmm. and in those moments you just you you have to calm like you said calm and say oh boy you know it's like it's, it's coming there is because there's a stretching and there's a there's something new coming into your life and there's and, nothing wrong with with yeah. seeking guidance for developing mm -hmm. that skill right i mean right. we want to exactly. we want to develop uh, certain muscles in certain areas, we go get a personal trainer, right? Exactly. We want mm -hmm. our hair to look a certain way. We go to a beautician if we can't do it ourselves, mm -hmm. you know? And so if you are finding that you're struggling with something, and what I find is that most people, by the time they see me, they have tried everything that they feel like they could try to resolve a situation. So it's not coming from a, a non-intelligent mind. Usually these are very intelligent minds, but sometimes it takes someone outside of yourself to be able to help you out right you know imagine right. yourself in the in the pit you know you can see from your angle what you could possibly do to get out but the person standing mm -hmm. at the top has other ways of being able to help you maneuver out of that situation so that's just a kind of like a practical way of explaining that's good what that's that good. means somebody who knows may know more about that situation than you who may they is that what you mean um maybe not necessarily mm -hmm. because you know a you know, a doctor who's who's uh, putting a cast on your leg may have never had his leg leg broken, but he understands, wow. right? Mm -hmm. He understands mm -hmm. and has knowledge about solutions for your particular issue. Exactly, and and I will say that because after, like I said, after 13 years, I'm learning. There's things that I've learned, and um, 
from Bible reading, but also uh, I've I, I've had to master my mind. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so my goal is 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 I want to be a billionaire. I want to go past that. I would love to go past that. So uh, I have businesses and I have stuff that I'm running all at once, and I have to know what's what at what time. But it's I'm 35, about to turn 36, and it's taking that long for me to get here. So it uh, I. I I got yeah. What'd you say? It happened. It happens. Yeah. It it it, hap it happens. It happened. Meaning. It happened. Time yeah. It happens. Not yeah. It, you got here. Time. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 For me, mental illness started when I was 23. So it don't have to start when you a kid, because I knew, uh, you know, trauma when you're a child can happen, and and, and then that can cause mental illness as well. How people talk to you reminds you of what your uncle or somebody or your mom, how she used to treat you when you were a child and stuff like that. And so, which is post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. disorder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So there's stuff like that that can happen, but you can you can still take all these skills and 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 put that in motion too with stuff that's happening. So I want Man, I feel like we're gonna have to do another one of these uh, because I I would love we didn't really get into the, the child part. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what kids go through, and um, we talked about being when you grown and this is happening. But what happens when you you know how about when you were a child? This stuff can go even into a child mm -hmm. when you were when you were a child and how to deal with that as well. Right. Um. But uh, I don't wanna. I'm not trying to long win this. But uh, it, it it can happen. Um, it, I don't know. I got I got a few people on there. I don't know if y'all got any more questions for us. Maybe you do got a question about childhood stuff. I don't know. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna try to wrap this up right quick. And um, you know, again, I want to thank you, Kay, for being on here. No problem at and, all. Yeah. And 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 if there's anything anybody has to say, if not, that's cool. We uh. You know, I, I kind of want to go in that child thing, but we, we just, I feel like we need to wrap I want to do it so bad. I know you do. <laughs> but we want to wrap it up, guys. We can't be on it too long. Uh, I, we could schedule something different, schedule it again, mm -hmm. and um, go, into, go into more detail. But, uh, but y'all, thanks for being on here. Thanks, Kay, for being on here. You're welcome. And, yo, uh, I will have be having these monthly. You know, I'll be talking to people who, who are educated, who know what they're talking about, and um, we can go into more detail. So thanks, guys, for listening, and um, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Kay. You're welcome. Bye-bye.